The area under our sink, <laughs> Jess and I kind of thought was going to be the location that we're going to put the filters and the lift pump for our water maker. Um, it seemed like a good location for it. And then what we'd do in this big area up here, um, kind of in that chamfer panel was originally the plans of building that holding tank there. It would work just fine, but the water maker that we chose does not require a lift pump down here. So it's a little bit different of a scenario. We've now kind of modified everything. And unfortunately with the cabinetry already built around here, we had to go with a prefabricated tank is what we ended up having to do. So the dimensions that we had available, uh, Got a little roller molded tank in, um, and it definitely reminded me why we hadn't done this in other areas. Just this little tank here, which is a 10 gallon tank. Now this is one of their heavy duty ones, so it's a, a 5 eighths inch uh, plastic tank. Got it from Ronco Tanks, I guess. It's heavy. It's, it's, this is gonna be 10, maybe 15 pounds of just plastic there, where when you look at the space, it very, very easily could have been turned into our holding tank had we known that that was the direction we were gonna go. All it would have required was one more wall and a top, and then uh, another fiberglass lining and a couple of coats in there, and saved a ton of, ton of weight. Um, and money, of course, too. This is still, it was you know, 180 bucks. So it's one of those problems, again, we're gonna be running into that a lot right now, where it's things that, directions that we thought we were gonna be going, and then we ended up switching how we're gonna be fitting out this boat, and that's impacting stuff like this. But nonetheless, now, we ended up having just uh, two fittings put on the top here, one the vent and then one the intake. And to remind people, these are electric heads, um, so they cut up everything as they're discharging. A uh, macerator is in, built into them when it pumps it over, so it's all liquids coming across. And then on the bottom, so we can do a gravity uh, dump here, this is one and a half inch fitting. And this just goes right in here. And the big part is going to be uh, setting it up. So of course it doesn't move around on us. Um, I got to cut a hole in here and then the hoses will come through this and it'll be correct as charged here. Now the water line's way down, um, so we don't have to worry about it. We're basically, we're 250 millimeters, nine inches, 10 inches above the, or 10 inches above the uh, water line. So plenty of space there for discharge. Um, most likely you put a valve on the bottom here so there's no, nothing in the hoses if we don't want it. And then we'll have our cool little four spar uh, seacox down at the bottom here in this area. And we can just discharge it as needed. But that's going to be the next project. It's a little tight in here and I've got to get a way to secure this and hopefully make it so I can uh, release it. So kind of a strap setup. But there isn't a lot of room and it's not like I can tie directly into this unless I uh, glass in something. So that might be the, the plan. We'll see. If you can believe it, today is our two year anniversary from when the boat build started. Yay for us, kind of. I think we originally were thinking that at this point we'd be launching this summer and we're not, that's next year. Um, but either way, we are super proud of the work that we've been doing and it's time to go out and celebrate. Finally enough, we've done it the past two years on this date, but we are going to go visit some of our sailing friends at their cute little Airbnb in Annapolis and have some tacos and beers and raise a glass. Hi! Hi! Hello! How are you two? Hello! Oh, hi! How are you? I got Bernie! Hi, Kisses! Kisses! <laughs> so when we get to this house, it's like, oh my god, this house is so great. And so I text Sarah, and it was like, your house is so nice, it's so homely. <laughs> <laughs> And then she asked me, she's like, what does homely actually mean? <laughs>
So yesterday, yesterday someone told me that no, it's not homely, it's homey. Open up the door. What's behind the door? Wow. That is so There's cute. Of it, which means they're all doing oh, if I lived right in a house, this so, would be it. So we are with Ryan and Sophie in their very homely, homey uh, Airbnb they're renting right now. We're gonna have tacos and celebrate. Well, they don't actually even know what we're celebrating, but we've got something to celebrate, so raise some glasses. Today is the two year anniversary of our boat build, beginning it. I'm glad we get to spend it with friends oh and God. other sailors, so. You know what else is, is the anniversary today? What's that? It's eight years ago Sophie and I met. <gasps> oh, Congratulations! Here, the holding tank. I have gone on Amazon and bought these fancy straps. Um, they're just battery hold down straps um, made for something, an application kind of actually pretty close to this where you tie down your uh, batteries to prevent them from moving in case you roll over or something like that. Used in RVs uh, and in boats. As you can see, if it's just right around here, have two of these. The idea is that these will actually be glassed, fiberglassed in, um, because, uh, keep in mind, this is all foam cord composite construction. There really is no way to screw anything in. There's, there's nothing really to screw to, it's just soft foam. So everything has to be bonded to it, glassed, or um, stuck to the surface to, or through bolted. Now, one side of this is through the hull, which would, of course, not be the way to do it. And then the other side is through into the shower area, which just for cosmetic purposes, we don't want it through bolted. So this is something we've done before, just glassing these things into place and works really well. Just two little strips of fiberglass, um, the kind of vertical setup, and they hold these things really well. And will hold hopefully the tank really well too. And now the process is just figuring out what height up on the mat. And you probably can do one right about here, one right around this height then. Go through sand and prop the surface, and then just a quick little fiberglass. Again, not cosmetic at all, just uh, purely a structural thing. And it's gonna be high in the tank anyway, so we'll just use our um, 1208, which is the stuff with the fiberglass mat on it, and it adheres a little bit better to the surface. So I'll just prop this real quick, sand it, and then we should be good to glass. the heavy part and then it's going to be just laying out and taping this strap right where we want it um, because once those glass strips are in the fiberglass is going to run right here and right here and uh, once we get that in there then these can then move freely of course and get where they need to be they're not going to be slidable so they're going to be fixed in this actual position here um, Use the pictures to show what's done. Here. So the first step with the ponding is going to be just a bit of structural putty to go behind the straps, to make sure that it holds it well to the surface, and then I'll get the fiberglass on top of it. Strips 
gosh, it feels like it's been so long since I fired the last time. All I've been doing is sanding and fairing and sanding. Can't believe I actually missed this. down here, strips down here. I don't think these straps are ever gonna go anywhere. Um, so we shouldn't have a problem with holding tank moving on us at all. Uh, let that gear up, plop that in place, and then what we'll do is I'll start propping the surface for some of that total boat bilge paint, just to get a nice clean area in here. And we should be able to install that in the next couple of days. That's not going anywhere. Oh my god. Oh. Let's strap her in. some of the little spots there, get that done, and then we can run the hoses uh, through here and up through there and to the toilet where that's going to end up being. Um, and then the other thing too is the intake hose for the water maker is gonna run right straight through this little tight area here. It's just large enough to be able to get that through um, and get that up top for us. Thank you everyone in the last episode for the comments about different options that you had for uh, wood in this area. We, before the video actually released, we ended up contacting a company out of uh, Michigan, Northern Michigan, that uh, is shockingly cheaper to order from them than it is to get even locally. So we ended up going that route. Now, the one of the things too is, remember we we're only ordering 20 board feet of, of uh, roof cut white oak. So not the biggest order in the world anyway, um, but it was just finding some place that actually had it and this place had, had it and hopefully we'll be seeing on the next few days.